The name of that song is titled Ways and Means. And it's from the album called Dance Songs for Hard Times and was written and recorded by my special guest star today, Reverend Peyton of Reverend Peyton's Big Damn Band. Reverend Peyton, welcome to the Friday Afternoon Music Mix. Thank you so much. It's great to be with you. Appreciate you talking with me. It's a pleasure to have you. I've been a big fan for many years. This is quite an honor to have you on the show. I wanted to point out that you are on the Galactic Get Down Tour right now, which started in August, but followed up a completely sold out European tour that you returned back in July from. And you will be on tour, you and your band, until June the 15th, 2024, which ends in Palm Springs, California. You're going to be a busy guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's been a tough few years to be a musician. So many literal years basically being laid off, essentially. Um, you know, we are making up for lost time a little bit this year. You know, things have really been going well. You know, while things are going well, I wanted to to get out there and strike while the iron's hot, bring this music to, to people. And, you know, we never really got to tour the record, even though it was released just because, you know, it was the middle of uh, the, the pandemic. So we, you know, we couldn't really do it. So we're still kind of touring our record. And in the meantime, we're already on the next stuff. You know what I mean? It's just so part of being a, a musician like us today is it requires a lot of live shows. Luckily, we like doing it and we're good at it. So it's OK. <laughs> Indeed, you are good at it. And let me point out, too, that yeah. the big damn band is actually a trio, which consists of your wife, Breezy, and also the drum kit guy, Max Sentiny. And That's right. <laughs> and you pointed out that you are the only band with a bucket endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason for that is he has on his drum kit, he has a five gallon bucket that's turned upside down, which he plays masterfully. <laughs> How I first got the album, which is just fantastic, 
Reverend Peyton. Your manager, Brett, sent it to me back in 2021. Oh, thanks so much, man. I'm, I'm real proud of this record. I, I, I really am. It is great. I've got all your albums. This one really takes the cake. I'd be amiss if I didn't tell people that their introduction to this album <laughs> should be to go onto your YouTube channel and watch the video Ways and Means. That, in my mind, Reverend Peyton, is one of the best music videos ever made. It's that good. Thank you. You know, I kind of like making music videos. And the, and the weird thing is, is that now, you know, TikToks and Reels have kind of killed music videos, but I still think they're cool and I like doing it. So I'm going to continue doing it because in my mind, art for art's sake is sometimes that's all that matters. As far as that video goes, when I told the band, like, they're like, oh, you have an idea for music? Like, oh, yeah. You know, I've, you know me, I've got the ideas all worked out. I said, this one's going to be in a, in a laundromat. And they're like, wait a minute, we're going to have a music video on the laundromat? I go, yes, yeah, me in the laundromat. And it's getting there. they're like, wait a minute. And they, they're like, that sounds like the most boring thing ever. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's going to be awesome. But trust me, it's going to be in the laundromat. And they're like, well, what, what's it going to happen? And I said, well, I said, the main thing is, is everybody's kind of, it's going to be like, all the clothes are going to be kind of like the same colors. And they're like, it's in a laundromat and all the clothes are the same colors. Like, you're still not selling me, Rev. I go, Pro I promise you, wait till you see this thing. Wait till we get into it. You're going to understand. You know, it's one of those things where the plan came together. You know, it just really worked out. Oh, it's, it's the big damn laundromat, the dancers. And I think that the thing that pulled me into that video is the just absolute infectious smiles of you and Breezy in there. I mean, it's just, it's so, can't hardly hold your, your feet down when you watch it. It really is fantastic. I hope everybody will go and do that. You mentioned TikTok and you have a great TikTok channel as well. It's announcing the tour on there, of course, right now and showing all the dates. It, it's been a good medium for you. I see there's a lot of good videos on that. We just try to, to do whatever it takes, right? I mean, as is, is you know, when we started as a band, you know, MySpace was a thing <laughs> and uh, then MySpace died and it's been Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and, and, you know, whatever it is, we'll just continue to chase it down because it's really about the music for me. And, you know, I always say this, like, you know, music is generally played in bars and venues and theaters, but if all that collapsed and for whatever reason, live music was in Claire's at the mall, then I just go to Claire's at the mall and that's where I play music. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter. Like, I just, I'll just continue chasing it out and trying to figure it out. And, you know, TikTok's one of those things right now we had to kind of figure it out. We're still getting better at it. We're still learning curve on that. You know, we're trying. And basically what we do is, is just try to be real real, just post stuff that's really just uh, little snippets of, of the music here and there and picking a little and just, you know, interesting stuff that happens along the way. And there's a lot of people that try real hard on social media. I would rather have my social media be smaller than come across as someone trying too hard. You know what I mean? So I we do. just try to like, let it be as organic as possible and just be ourselves and just see what happens. You know, I mean, it's just like everything else. I mean, it first started off, it was CDs. Now it's Spotify and vinyl records, you know, whatever it is, wherever, wherever it's at, man, we'll just chase it out. That's what we do. And speaking of the music, let's do another song about sad songs.
you i know that your career when you started got cut short for about a year or so due to a physical it's not an injury it's a it was a condition i guess you called it can you explain a little bit about that i have a condition called ehler danlos syndrome they want me to see this you know on the radio obviously but if you can watch it here through this the power of the computer can you see my thumb do that right there oh my gosh see my hands all bend back completely 90 degrees every joint Almost every joint in my body can do that. That's not normal, and it's not really good. <laughs> One of the things that I attribute to that condition is there's a lot of things that go along with it. I'm very prone to tendon damage and injury because I'm so flexible. What I get in terms of those little injuries are these little cysts that grow on my tendons, and they're sometimes called ganglion cysts. They can be very troublesome. I've had a few of them that got to be such a problem. They locked up my tendons and uh, I had to have surgery. You know, originally I didn't know much about it and there was a lot less known about all this stuff. And when I was 19, I had a doctor tell me I was never going to play guitar again. And I ended up having surgery on both hands. I was back to playing. Through the years, I've had more of these cysts come. I've been able to learn how to kind of deal with them without surgery. I haven't had one knock on wood. Let me find some wood to knock on. It hasn't been bad enough where I've had to have be operated on, be able to kind of uh, you know mitigate it before it gets to be that troublesome, debilitating. Part of the superpower, I mean, part of the reason my hands are so flexible and I can do some of the things I can do is also makes me prone to these cysts and injury. You know, it's a, it's that weird double-edged sword, you know, I try real hard to take care of myself, supplement with lots of collagen and try to keep my joints and tendons and stuff real healthy so that you know, I can continue doing this as long as, as they'll let me. You are a fabulous finger picker, but for the longest time, I thought you had a bass player in the band. And then I read, well, you're finger picking. You're actually putting a bass beat in with your thumb. That's right. Yeah. So I play in the old country blues fashion. So, you know, when you hear the records, like just that one sad songs right there, that's one guitar, one drummer, and one washboard player. There was no overdubs of bass, no overdubs of anything. All the music, all the melody that you heard was one guitar. I played, you know, essentially the bass lines with my thumb and the melody with my fingers at the same time. You know, I've just kind of taught my brain to be able to do that. It's not just your hands, it's your brain, you know. And over the years, I've tried to get in there and take this stuff to some interesting places, or at least try to, you know, not just play the same stuff that's been played for the last hundred years of American music, but play stuff that speaks to what I'm trying to say and, and who I am. I think that the best blues music particularly is very personal. You know, a lot of genres, there's like great folk songwriters that, they're, they craft these beautiful fiction songs that they're, they they feel like real stories because they feel so human. And I think blues is one of those that just works better when it's autobiographical. So you have to kind of come in and, and you have to really mine deep in your soul. And if you're going to do that, if you're going to get into your soul and, and create art, music that way, you know, you've got to be very true to yourself or else it's not going to work, right? So sometimes that means that I'm pushing the envelope a little bit. So be it. The older I get, the more I'm fine with it. You know, when I was younger, I, it was like, oh, man, I don't know if Charlie Patton would have done it this way. And now I'm like, ah, this is the way Reverend Peyton does it. So it's all good. Let's point out, too, that in our area, you've got two shows that are coming up. And one will be right here in our backyard at Bellingham, Washington, at the Mount Baker Theater. That will be on Wednesday, October the 11th at 7.30 p.m. Then the next night, you'll be in Seattle, Washington, at one of my favorite venues, Tractor Tavern, and that will be on Thursday at 8 o'clock p.m., on from there to Portland, Oregon, at the Star Theater on the 13th, and then <laughs> back and forth across the country. You, you do have a, a breakneck schedule that goes clear up into June when you end in um, Palm Springs, California. I noticed that you are releasing your albums now on what's called Family Label and you have 30 Tigers distributing for you. Have you found that to work much better as far as not only distribution, but, you know, control of your product? Well, you know, 30 Tigers have been great. They're, it's a pretty 
interesting record label out of Nashville that allow you to to really kind of get them involved as much as uh, as you want in a way. You know, they sort of believe in giving artists artistic freedom to just do your thing and create your own sort of little umbrella label and release stuff. It's been great because I've never done I, I never would sign with anybody that was going to come in and say, okay, man, you're gonna we're going to bring in these songwriters and this producer and they're going to, you know, it just wouldn't work for me. I have too strong of a vision of who I am and what this stuff's supposed to be. I wouldn't say I'm obtuse necessarily. I don't think that's necessarily it. It's just, I wouldn't want someone to come in and give them the ability to, to mess it up. You know, like if someone, like if they had an idea or, you know, like, it's like, let's go down that road, you know, let's try it. I'm up for that. I just don't want to give the final say away because in my opinion, that's where the artistic integrity flies right out the window is when, you know, as long as you, like as an artist, I, I'm willing to try stuff. I'm willing to push the envelope. You know, I'm willing to do it. Let's do it. But at the end of the day, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I want to be able to say, Hey, you know what? You know, this isn't me. So I have to respectfully uh, decline and change the path we're going down. You know what I mean? So the beauty of 30 Tigers is they stay right out of the way and they let us do our own thing. And I'm very appreciative of it. Let's do a third song of yours. This one is called Poor Until Payday. I'm poor until payday.
I want to point out that you were nominated for a Blues Music Award in 2019 for an album that came out called Poor Until Payday. And that was for Best Blues Rock Album. And then you were also on the cover of Vintage Guitar Magazine. Tell me a little bit about this guitar. It sounds spectacular. Funny you bring that up. Two of the songs that you have played, Sad Songs and Poor Until Payday, are both played on that 1949 Harmony H50 that I'm holding on the cover of Vintage Guitar Magazine. So that's pretty interesting you bring that up. It's pretty cool. So that the song you did, the folks just listened to, they go and find that cover, that Vintage Guitar Magazine. That's the guitar that you hear is the guitar I'm holding on that. And the funny thing is, is that I paid $300 for that guitar at a car show in Iowa we played. I'm guessing it's probably the only $300 guitar that's ever been on the cover of Vintage Guitar Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> and here's, here's the worst part. It's all the purists will just probably just throw up right now. I'll, they'll, they'll, be, they'll be listening and crashing cars. <laughs> it's got an original Gibson P13 pickup in it, which is the precursor of the P90, the sought-after pickup. I don't love the sound of it. I love the guitar. I love its neck. I love its feel. I love its look. So I took a little 3M tape, and I took a pickup off a 1963 silver tone silhouette guitar and i 3m taped that in the middle position and then i wired it so that i could in a push pull pot because one of the pots had been replaced before i got it so it, i didn't feel too bad about replacing it. it didn't have the original pot in it on one of them i made it try push pull pot so i can push it in and play the 63 silver foil off that silver tone or i can pull it out and i can play the original gibson p13 from 1949 so if you look closely, you'll see an extra pickup there. And I'm sure a few purists that, that read that magazine looked at it and went, wait a minute, that's not an original <laughs> pickup. What's going on there? What do you do to that thing? So I use just a little tiny bit of 3M tape. It can be undone if I need to. So, What a great story. <laughs> I love that. It's a super. And we were talking earlier, we did this interview that you and I both share a, a bit of heritage. You're uh, from Browns County, Indiana, and I was born in Terre Haute, which uh, is in Vigo County. <laughs> the sense of humor that comes out of that part of the Midwest is awesome. You licensed four songs to Showtime's Shameless series. Yeah, it's been some years ago. Yeah, we did. That was pretty cool. That came around at a time for us where we were pretty desperate. We needed the money. We were able to take that money and buy another van. It was pretty perfect. It's like the universe knew we needed a van, so there was Showtime offering us some money for some songs and it was just the right time. It was perfect. I wish they'd come back. I got more songs showtime. Come back. <laughs> Better songs, by God. You know, I am just so grateful you came on to talk with me today. This has been just an absolute pleasure and a hoot to top it all off. My special guest today has been Reverend Peyton of Reverend Peyton's Big Damn Band. He is on what is called the Galactic Get Down Tour that started in August after completing a sold-out tour in Europe prior to that. And we'll keep going until it ends in Palm Springs, California in June of 2024. He will be at Bellingham, Washington's Mount Baker Theater on Wednesday, October the 11th, 2023 at 7.30 p.m. Seattle, Washington Tractor Tavern, Thursday at 8 o'clock p.m. And then on to Portland, Oregon at the Star Theater on 13th. Latest album is called Dance Songs for Hard Times. Please take a look at his YouTube and TikTok channels and look at that video, Ways and Means website. Be sure and take a look at that too. And if you are looking for tickets, you can get the link bigdamnband.com, facebook.com forward slash bigdamnband, YouTube is bigdamnband, and then of course TikTok, bigdamnband. Reverend Peyton, thank you so very much for joining me here today. Why don't we go out with another song off of the new album called Rattle Can. How's that sound? That sounds perfect. Thank you so much for, for talking with me today. I sure appreciate it. It's been great.
the hole, follow, I clean the hole, shoot 